Okay, and this is to continue our series of looking at the Deadly Killer Sudokus published in the Times. Uh, this one's from Saturday. Um, you can see I've just filled in a couple of numbers in the grid um, in terms of, you know, four square can only be one, three, one, three. And uh, you should be able to fill in this square immediately. Uh, so you can see this top, all of the three by three boxes in a Killer Sudoku or any Sudoku would sum to 45 because they're going to contain all of the numbers one to nine exactly once. You can see we've already got boxes uh, totaling 37 uh, in this 3x3 three three box here. So we know this, these three cells here must sum to 8. If these three, sum, sum, these three cells sum to 8, then this must be a 6. Um, okay, so what else can we see? Something just to note is that we'll have to be a 1 in one of these squares here because an 8 in 3 cells must contain a 1. And that leads to something rather uh, rather nice, actually, about this 8 box here, believe it or not. So this an 8 box in 2 cells can be 1, 7, 2, 6, or 3, 5, but we have a 1 here, so this cell can't be a 1. And look, because of what the work we just did on this 14 box, this can't be a 1 either, so 1, 7 isn't possible. And neither is 2, 6, because look look here, we've got a 6 and a 2 in this column already, so this can be neither a 6 nor a 2. Um, so in fact, therefore, this must be 3, 5, 3, 5, and look, we have a 3 here. So, oh, that's not what I intended to do. I intended to put 5 in this box and a 3 in this box. And quite unusually, we can then use exactly the same logic on this 7 box, because this 7 box obviously can't be a 1616 box because of this. But now it can't be a 2525 box either, because we have a 2 and a 5 now in column 6. So this, in fact, has to be 3434, 3, 4, like that. And now, because we know that this is this, these three cells here sum to eight, and we know they don't contain a three. In fact, this must be one two five one two five one two five. And then we can use the geometry of the grid to identify this cell. So again, pause if you need to here. But the reasoning is, if we draw a, an imaginary line across the grid where my cursor is going here. We know that all of the cells below this imaginary line will sum up to 135 because there are three complete 3x3 three three boxes below this imaginary line and each one individually would sum to 45. And now we can sum the numbers in the cages here. So we've got 18, 46, uh, 81, 85, 93, 112, 130. So therefore, these two cells here must sum to 5. And if they sum to 5, this must be a 3. And therefore, we have a 1, 4, 1, 4 here. Now you can see, uh, looking at row 6, we've got a 3, plus 28 is 31, plus 11 is 42. So, in fact, we need three more in two cells, which can only be done with a one-two uh, pair. And then with, this is in a 20 cage, so we've already got three used up, so we need these two to add to 17. That's got to be done with an eight-nine. That's the only way that can be done. And then we can use simple Sudoku logic here. We can see it has a one and a two here, and there's a one and a two here. Therefore, there has to be a 1 and a 2 in, in this 16 cage. I'd actually write this in like... Well, I would if the internet was working. There we go. Um, so we know that the other two cells in this 16 cage would have to sum to 13. And that could be done a few ways yet. So just hold off writing in how that's going to work. 
R. But here also we have by Sudoku logic, we have two threes, we have a three here and a three here. Therefore there is a three in one of these two positions. Now if that's the case, in this 26 box we've already used up three with one cell, so the rest of the cells, the other three cells have to sum to 23. That can only be done one way and that's with 6, 8, 9. So in fact we can write we can write that in, which means this is 4747 four, seven, like this, which actually means that this is a 4 and this is a 1, and therefore we can remove the 1 from these two positions. Then we can just do a bit of work, I think, on columns 8 and 9. If we look at columns 8 and 9, again, we can isolate the value of these two cells. I'm not sure if that's going to be helpful, but let's just do it anyway to check. 26 plus 11 is 37, 53, 61, 79. So these two cells sum to 11. Now, that might be a little bit restricted. I'm just looking at this 28 box. Obviously a 28 box can never contain a number less than a 4. Um, so what can we say here? What's possible and what isn't possible? Well clearly neither 3, 8 or 4, 7 is possible. So either this is a 2, 9 combination and this can't be a 2 up here if that's the case. So this would have to be a 9 and this would have to be a 2. Or we're looking at a 5-6 combination. And I think that's still possible in either way, like that. And then there may be some work we can do on this bottom 3x3 three three box here. We have 18 here, and we have a 1-4-3 in the other cells. So that's, that sums to 26. So we know these three cells have to sum to 19. Now if this is a 2, that would mean this would be 8, 9 and this would be 8, 9. That looks possible. If this was a 5, these two would have to sum to 14, which I think it also... 14, well obviously 5, 9 isn't possible, so this would have to be 6, 8. If this was a 6, on the other hand, these two would have to sum to 13. And there's no way that can work, because we can't have a 6, 7, because there's already been a 6. We can't have a 5, 8, because of this 5. And we can't have a 4, 9, because of this 4. So this cannot be a 6, and therefore this cannot be a 5. And that is really useful, because now let's have a look at column 8 again, and we have four numbers here, four different cells with exactly four unknowns in them. So in fact we know that in some order these four cells will contain the numbers 3, 6, 8 and 9 exactly. Moreover we know that the six, this one can only be 6 or 9 and therefore the 3, 8 must be here in this, these three cells. So this cannot be an 8. And what's more, we still need to place somehow, what else do we need to place in this grid or in this column? So we need to place 1, which we know is here. We need to place a 2, which we haven't had, and we need to place a 7 as well, don't we? Okay. And I think we can we can go further here because look, we've got 6 and 8, 9, 6, 8, and 9 locked here. So the 7 and the 4 in column 7 are going to be somewhere in this, these three cells. Let me show you. So we don't quite know the order yet, but let's just put in the fact that the 4 and the 7 are down here somewhere. And look, we've got the 4 and the 7 up here. So we know that there is a 4 and a 7 in these two cells somehow. We know this can't be a 7 because of the work we did because these two cells have to sum to 11, if you remember. So in fact, therefore, this is the 7. And therefore, these two cells have to sum to 11 as well. Now, what's possible here? Um, 2, nine, two nines and 5, 6s are possible, aren't they, I think? Um, but there's all sorts of interesting things going on here because 
remember we also we need to place we need to place an eight in this box here. But this cell cannot be an eight because if this cell is an eight, these two would sum to eleven, and this would be a six. So we know there's not an eight here. Um, and therefore, the eight we know is locked into the top. It's, it's locked into these positions. And look over here, we've also got an eight locked into these top two rows, if you like, rows four and five. Therefore, in the central three by three box, we know that there must be an eight in one of these three positions, because there can't be an eight in anywhere in any of these, because it will be hit by the other eight that'll be. It's already there. Now look, the 8 can't go here because we already have a 3. So the 8 is in actually all this work is, is, has enabled us to conclude there is an 8 in one of these two positions here. So we now know um, that the other three cells in this 28 box must sum to 20. Now that's going to be really interesting. If this is a 6, for example, then the other two cells would have to be 5 and 9. Which I think might be impossible. Yeah, and in fact it is impossible, because the thing we have to remember here is we've locked the 4-7 into one of these three positions. But it's impossible that one that this cell is not four or seven, because if this cell is not four or seven, these two cells are four and seven, and therefore this is a six. So we must remember the only possibility for this cell is four or seven. So if this is eight, then this would and this this cannot be six. This has to be nine. That's what that shows, and therefore this is nine. And that's very useful because we can eliminate 9 from all of these boxes here. So we now know this box is made up of an 8 and a 9, which sum to uh, 17. So and we also so we know that the there is a 4, 7. This is how this box looks. Which means that this 11 is a 5, 6 box. And now the fact that we've locked this 9 in here um, severely limits what's possible for these two because it can't be 2, 9, it can't be 3, 8, it can't be 4, 7. So in fact we're looking at 5, 6 into these three, two cells now. So let's put that in. Number 6 if it actually the internet works. There we go. And therefore this is a 2. And therefore actually we're looking at 8 and 9 for these two cells here. So this is a... This is 8, 9, like that. Um, so then now we're looking for a 6, I think, aren't we? To fill this column in 6, 6, in one of those two positions, because we know it can't go here because that would force the 4, 7 up. Um, and in fact, now we've worked out that this, this, these two, the 2 is coming over here into one of these two positions and we're looking for a 5 in this box so this is the complete if you like um, structure of this 3x3 three three box here and that means this cell is extremely limited now um, if this is the 4 this will add to 6, 7 and this will be a 4 which is just about possible if this is the 7, then this would need to be a 7. And that leads, I think, to the last bit of logic necessary to finish the puzzle. So let's look now at column 6. We need to still place a 3 in this column, and it can't go here because we already have a 3 in this box. Therefore, the only place 
three can go in column six is in this position. Why do I think that finishes the puzzle? Well, I think it reveals something very interesting um, about this huge 35 box down here. So this is a 35 box in six cells. And we know all the numbers within this box or this cage here must be different. And we can see that it can't contain a one because there's a one here checking all of these cells and a one here checking this cell. So we know that the 35 box doesn't contain a one. And so the other two numbers it doesn't contain must sum to nine. Now, interestingly now, because of this four here and this four here, we also know this 35 box doesn't contain a four now. So logic we can extend is that therefore it also doesn't contain a five. So there is no one, four or five in this 35 box. Now, the most obvious thing that tells us is this is a four, but it also reveals that this can't be a five here. There must be a five in one of these two positions over on, oops, on this side of the grid. And now because we have a four here, these four cells here sum to 24. Uh, plus 18 is 42, and therefore this cell has to be a 3 in order to ensure that this box sums to the correct uh, 45 that we're looking for. Now this 3 here forces there to be a 3 in this 9 box, which means that this 9 must be 3, 6. And now there must be a three in this eight box here, in one of these two positions, which means this eight box is um, a one, four, three variation of the, of the eight box, if you like. And we can look at this top box here as well for more information. We've got a 27 plus eight entirely contained within this three by three cage. So that's 35. So these, these two cells have to sum to 10, but they can't include a 1, a 3, and a 4 in doing that, so they must in fact be 2 and 8. It's the only way that will work. Hopefully the internet will catch up with my, um, my typing now. And you can see this box can't contain a 2. Uh, if this is a 2, then the other three cells would have to sum to 26, which is impossible. So in fact, this is the 8, and this is the 2. Simple Sudoku logic forces this to be a 6, which means this is an 8, this is a 3, and this is a 6. This is a 3. positions. You can see there's got to be a 5 and a 9 here. And these 5 can go anywhere. But 9 can only go here or here. And that means that there must be a 9 here. And the puzzle's solved now. Um, there's not going to be, this has to be the 5. Uh, there isn't, uh, you know, there's nothing else clever to do. Um, so I don't suggest uh, it's an exercise for the reader. If you want to go and prove that it's it's solved, um, by all means, do that. Um, but another good puzzle, another good example of the killer Sudoku, I think, today. 19, these two have to sum to 9. Uh, 
Um, the only way I think that can work is with the 27. Everything else is, is taken. So, 7, 2, 2, 1, 1, 4, etc. Um, so, thanks for watching. Hope this has been interesting. Um, and we'll see you again next time. I'm cracking the cryptic. And I thought while well, we're about it, we'll just show you the deadly from Friday as well, just to show you the techniques necessary to fill that one in. All I've done so far is fill in the absolutely dead given answers. Um, first place I'd look for anything clever would be columns three and four, where you can see we should be able to isolate the value of these two boxes here. So we've got uh, 45 plus three. Uh, is 48 plus another 40 is 88 plus 7 is 95 plus 3 is 98 so we know these two cells here sum to 8 which means that we're looking at a 6 or a 7 in this position and of course we should be able to write in the value of this cell um, so we already have 31 here, therefore these three cells have to sum to 14. And that means that this must be an 8. Um, should be fairly clear. And then I think we should look at this bottom row. Um, and again, it's just these two cells that stick out of this bottom row. So we can isolate the value of these two cells. We've got 17, 27. 52, 59. So these two cells must sum to 14 in order to ensure that the bottom row sums to 45. And that means that the only way is if this is a 5 or a 6. And then we can look at column 1. We can see we've got a 19 and 11. And that's 30 plus 20 is uh, 50, plus 7, uh, 57. So these two cells here have to sum to 12. But this bottom box is a 7, so it can't take too big a number. It can only, I think, take a 3, 4, or a 5. That would seem right, wouldn't it? That could be a 7, 8, or 9. Gosh, this, this time software has really got slow this weekend. Okay, there we go. And that's quite helpful, believe it or not, because now this 7 box can only be 2, 3, or 4 in this cell. Why do I think that's helpful? Well, because I immediately am thinking about where I can place... Where can I place a 1 in this bottom box, this bottom row? I now can't place it in either of these positions, because because of the work I've done to show that this can only be a 5 or a 6. If there is a 1 in this box, the other three cells would have to be 7, 8 and 9. And 5 and 6 obviously doesn't fit the bill. So in fact the 1 is in the 10 box. Let's note that down. And now there's a neat trick that we can observe if we look at this 25 cage. Um, if this is a 5, and this number is a 6, then those two would be 11. We'd have to fill these two with 14, but 5, 9, and 6, 8 would not be possible. Therefore, if this is a 5, this cannot be a 6. It would have to be a 7. But obviously if this is a 6, this also could not be a 6, it would have to be a 7. So either way round, this is a 7. And now we need to have a look at this 10 box again. We know it contains a 1. We also know that this, this 7 box is either a 3, 4 or a 2, 5. So whatever we choose as the other numbers in here, can't take up both of those possibilities because otherwise this 7 box will be unfillable. So for example if this was a 145 10 box 
that would break this 7 box. So this is not a 1, 4, 5, 10 box. It's not a 1, 2, 7, 10 box. And therefore, in fact, we can prove it's a 1, 3, 6, 10 box. It's the only other way this box works once we've proved it contains a 1. Now, so now we have a 3 in, in here, so we can't have a 3 over here. And look at that. This box now becomes 2, 5. And this box has to become a 6. Um, now these two add to 13. I think that means that these two have to add to 12, and they can't be 3, 9, they can't be 5, 7, so they have to be 4, 8. And that means the 8 has to be here, and 4 has to be here, and that's also going to break this puzzle open, um, which is uh, perhaps quite a surprising way to be able to um, you know, completely um, break open a puzzle of this nature. Um, but it just shows if you work very hard on the cages and the restrictions that are, are given in these deadly puzzles, you can make a surprising amount of deductions. And in this case, uh, you can you can make enough deductions to um, to actually crack the puzzle. Alternatively, we could look at um, well, we knew these two cells here had to sum to twelve, so this has to be a seven, in fact. Well, this is an 8, and this is a 7. Well, we've got 1, 3, 9 to place here. This obviously can't take a 1, so this is 3 or 9. And therefore, as we know there's a 1 in here with a 7, they add to 8, so the other two cells have to sum to 12 and include a 3 or a 9, so in fact therefore this has to be a 3 or a 9. Now this 11 box is forced, it can't be 2, 9, it can't be 3, 8, it can't be 4, 7, so it must be 5, 6. And if you want to see some really cheeky ways to make progress from here, well, what about this? So we can see in columns 3 and 4, we still haven't got any 9s, and we've only got two cages left. So we know that there is a 9 in this cage, and there must be a 9 in this cage. But that allows us to interact with some other cages that must contain 9s, because this cage, this 22 cage, must always contain a 9. So there's a 9 in this 18 cage, and there's a 9 in this 22 cage. Therefore, there are no other 9s in rows 3 and 4. In particular, there's not a 9 in this position. And yet we know that this 22 box must contain a 9, because all 22 boxes do contain 9s. Now, we also know that we have to place a 9 in one of these three boxes. Don't know which one yet. But that interacts with this 22 box, which we have to place a 9 in. Therefore, in columns 5 and 6, there are no other 9s. So this cannot be a 9 either. Therefore, that's a 9. So that's another example of sort of, you know, some fairly uh, advanced logic, I suppose, that you can do just with the geometry of the grid. You know, similarly, we can look over here, we can look at this 20 box. Um, if this is a 3, uh, this is obviously 8 and 9, um, which would have to be oops, not like that, um, this way around. Uh, if this is a 9, these two cells have to sum to 11 without being 2, 9, without being 4, 7, without being 5, 6. So it have to actually be 3 and 8. And there's already a 3 here, so in fact you can prove this cell is an 8, bizarrely enough. Um, which also is quite surprising, but also seems to be true. And 
now we need, still need to place a 4 in this cage, so that, that's now our time software has died again. So this has to be a 4. 